every morning and afternoon. This herd of elite Holstein Frisian cows comes in for milking. Yeah, milking 850 at peak. Every cow produces a yearly average of 10,300 litres of milk, amongst the most productive dairy herd in Australia. I'm not sure what the actual number is, but it'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be up there in the, in the top sort of 10% at least anyway. Once relieved of their milk, the cows enjoy a high protein, high energy meal before traipsing back to graze on these rich pastures at Fish Creek in southeast Victoria. But there's also something quite remarkable, though not readily apparent, about each of these cows. When they give birth in coming months, there'll barely be a boy in sight. Almost all of them will produce females. These are some of the earlier calves, all females, all the result of gender selection. Farming's brave new world is here and gathering pace. Ever since there's been life on Earth, nature has determined whether you're born male or female. Now, as never before, science is shaping livestock industries through a process called sexed semen. The demand for sex semen around the world is unprecedented. In short, it sorts X and Y chromosomes in sperm. If you want female calves, you use semen, where the male Y chromosomes have been removed. The end user can have the choice of male or female, so if they want to breed a lot of females, they can do that. Or if they want to breed long lines of steers with consistency, they can utilise it uh, that way quite well. The means of sorting semen was developed in the USA in the late 1980s. In 1995, a team at the University of Sydney used the technique to breed the world's first gender-selected sheep, Larry, a male lamb. The technology was then taken up by the Duke of Westminster, a keen farmer. Three years later, his UK company Cogent made the first commercial sales of sex semen for dairy cattle. Rowan Foote recognised the potential of sexed semen early on. Uh, I've been now uh, using sex semen since 2004. Um, predominantly on heifers, well it was all on heifers uh, until 2017 where we started putting it into, into the milking herd and we've been um, increasing our percentage of, uh, of semen used in the herd ever since then. In 2006, Landline looked at the technology, then still in its infancy, at James Mann's dairy at Donovan's South Australia. We're always interested in whatever gives us a competitive advantage over anybody else in the world really that's what you know if you if you get down to real fundamentals that's what we're about producing milk as cheaply as possible that consumers want to buy the leading genetic companies have yet to utilize the sex semen technology so cogent's range of elite bulls though expanding has yet to include all of the world's best sires and even then the cost may remain a sticking point for some because of the nature of the technology uh, it is always going to be expensive to produce 16 years on, the product has improved markedly. Technology has definitely got better over time. We're seeing a lot better conception rates uh, from, from the start of 2004 up to now. It's, uh, yeah, it's been massive. Today, there's a far wider choice of elite genetics from around the world. The semen sorting technology has improved and it's cheaper. The cost per cow has roughly halved to about $50. As a result, we're getting farmers who are using some of the best bulls in the world and, you know, they, they're getting that superior, uh, those superior genes into their herd and it's all the better for the, you know, the overall productivity of the farm. In 2017, US-based genetics company ST bought a majority share of Cogent, part of its vision to be a world leader in the improvement of dairy and beef genetics. And since then, we have uh, seen many more labs put in. Gender selection labs is, uh, I think, uh, 40 plus labs in 33 countries now. Uh, most of them working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, making semen. 124 straws? Correct. Okay, and then we have Marcelo Sext, 22162. Growing demand here is seeing the company's Australian branch also expanding. There are some 20 careful steps from the collection of semen 
through to processing and sorting. And that's the main driver, conception rate and fertility. If that's optimised, then you get engagement. And so that's been the, the, the main focus of the business and it's an ongoing focus. And calving difficulties these yeah, days? No troubles at all. It's amazing, isn't it? The shorter gestation of a, of a heifer calf, it yeah. makes a massive difference. Brad Aitken, who featured in our 2006 story, says there's a raft of reasons for the growing popularity of sex semen, such as lower birth weight calves, so there's fewer problems at calving time. I reckon that's one real upside with sex semen is that you can, you really, uh, very few bulls. Yeah, exactly. Some dairy farmers are joining surplus dairy cows to beef genetics for the meat market, a nice sideline. Others are using sex semen to breed dairy heifers for the lucrative export market. The product is getting better every day and the discerning breeder out there or the discerning farmer is making some pretty astute decisions. And, you know, in some people's case, they've really created an extra income stream if they're, you know, the, the, the export market is so lucrative, particularly in the Holstein breed, it's extremely lucrative at the moment. Yeah, it's a very lucrative uh, side business coming through. We're exporting um, yeah, over 200 heifers a year. And gender selection has another big virtue, largely avoiding the controversial animal welfare issue of bobby calves. These are surplus, mostly male dairy calves that go to slaughter at five days of age. Dairy Australia estimates that last year nationwide about 300,000 bobby calves met that fate. It's Rowan Foote's motivation to use sex semen and raise all his calves. Yeah, that was the, that was the main thing was, um, yeah, it was to, uh, to uh, alleviate the, the bobby calf market. This dairy farm at Jindavik in West Gippsland also has a firm policy of no bobby calves. The main kind of incentive to use the sex semen was about the plight of the poor male Jersey bobby calf. Um, they don't really have any value in, in our industry and they unfortunately get slaughtered at about five days old off to the abattoirs, which is something that we don't really agree with and, and we really want to change. And I think it's something that welfare-wise the industry really needs to step up in that regard. In many countries, the practice is banned. New Zealand is about to bring in tighter restrictions. Many believe Australia will inevitably follow suit. To be honest, I don't think it's something that we're going to have a huge amount of choice in in a few years. I think there's going to be legislation coming in that means that you know a lot of us are going to have to look a lot more firmly at, at using sex semen and, and beef mop up bulls. So I definitely think it's the path forward for the industry. Dairy farming is a natural fit for sex semen. Farmers want female calves that will grow into fine milk producing cows. So far here, sex semen has been living up to its promise. Last year I think we ran at about 10% bulls, which is what we're kind of promised, which is great. Uh, this year we've only been calving for a week or so, but we've actually only got about 5% bull calves, so that's amazing as well. Latest figures show about a quarter of Australian dairy farms are now using sex semen. In the United Kingdom, the figure is closer to half. So this whole area of sex semen is evolving at a great rate, and primarily there's been so much research in the success of conception rate that that is, is driving that engagement. Up till now it's been the dairy industry that's been the great beneficiary of this technology. But the company believes there's even greater potential for Australia's beef industry. The dairy industry is a couple of million dairy cows, not showing much growth, perhaps even retracting, whereas we see the beef and the demand for protein ever increasing. So Peter, these are the offspring of some of your work. <laughs> Yes, they are. Uh, Tim, these are wagyu steers, uh, resulting from sex semen. They're probably 100 to 120 days off going to the feedlot through sex semen, yep. The sector's biggest users of sex semen at present are stud breeders. They want male breeding stock, elite bulls. We see it in the beef industry very, very strongly, where the uh, large corporates and the larger herds and the stud breeders are supplying the seed stock. They're developing pretty much designer required bulls for, to meet the various uh, categories of uh, demand. This commercial herd of Wagyu cattle at Jindera near Albury is a good example of how sex semen can be used. The farmer wanted steers to take advantage of the very strong beef market and the technology has delivered just that, a fine, even line of high value cattle. Australia's beef cattle herd, currently on the rebound, numbers about 27 million. 
the technology can play a tremendous role in, in regenerating the flock or regenerating the herd by generating more females. So it, that technology gives us a great opportunity to, to restock and, and, and get the numbers back to where we need them to be after, after the next drought. Other technologies are assisting this product. Genomic testing, for example, that can determine the potential of an animal at birth. Yes, those poor performing animals have been identified early and so there's great cost savings in not feeding them. So they go early and uh, the high genotype tested animals will stay, whether it's in feedlots or on the farm. It also increases the speed of genetic improvement in herds and flocks. Use of sex semen in sheep is also on the rise. Sheep in Australia is a, a natural evolution to seek the opportunity for using sex semen and understand where that opportunity stands today and the potential for that opportunity into the future. This technology is being used in a range of other livestock. It's going to take a lot of different avenues, I think, going forward. The pig industry, the sheep industry is growing, and the goat industry, because of the uh, meat industry of the goats, will capture, again, a large part of the market going forward. So quite diversified, but largely aimed at protein. To put that into perspective, Globally, there's a voracious, increasing demand for protein. Making that more sustainable is profoundly important. More efficient animals in a feedlot situation, being male, uh, they're the sort of opportunities that, that can occur by incorporating this technology, that whole area of, of carbon footprint, and understanding how the technology can support those strategies. Farm livestock is only the tip of the iceberg for this emerging technology. Sorted semen also has enormous potential for conserving or restoring threatened species, and work is already underway. Collecting the semen, sexing it, uh, utilising it, doing the AI, etc., and also obviously storing for future gene banks. And there are endless other possibilities closer to home. Cats and dogs, perhaps. Could be some ideal working dogs that become involved in a sex semen situation, so who knows? Oh, <laughs>